I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing, Big Dave? I'm doing good. How you doing? Doing good. Friday. Friday's good? Friday's always good. Yeah, Fridays are fun. This week, our topic has been on discipline. Next week, we're going to talk about our topic is imagination. So it'll be kind of fun. And today, I am very excited. We are starting a new book study, The Power of Heart Language by Monty Taylor. So before we get started, let's pause plan for a second, David. So let's pause plan 2018 so far, because now when we start a new book, you know what that means? It's a new quarter, all right? So we now enter the second quarter of this year, and it was just a few short months ago that we celebrated the new year. So it is important to reflect on this last quarter and the results that you have achieved so far. I do this with every single coaching client that I'm working with. First, career. Are you progressing with your work goals? Are you moving in a direction of growth? Are you staying the same or are you falling back? You gotta examine this and be very honest. Finances. Are you moving forward with your New Year's money goals? Are you staying the same or are you going backwards with your health? Are you achieving your health goals? We're in the, we've now starting the, you know, fourth month, right? So the question is, are you achieving your health goals? Is your diet and exercise dialed in? Are you moving forward or falling back? Because there is no staying the same in the health category. It's one way or the other. Relationships. Are you developing the relationships that you set out to develop back in January? Are you growing, staying the same, or are you falling back? You've got to be honest with yourself, people. Every one of these categories, spiritual, personal growth. Are you growing? Are you following your plan? The plan that you set for your New Year's resolution. Are you stuck? Are you sabotaging yourself? Are you procrastinating? These are the questions you have to answer. So it's essential that you stay focused on your life. Remember something, you are the captain. If your life momentum is not moving towards the accomplishment of your New Year's goals, it means something is disconnected. You are out of flow. The, ener the flow energy is the energy of growth. And you have to ask yourself, what is disconnected? Head, plan. Your daily move is your daily movement. Are you moving forward? Goals. Do you need to revise or stay the course? Clarity. Are you clear or unclear? Do you have to redo your plan a little bit? It's okay. A lot of my clients have to redo their plan or polish it. Your heart. Purpose. Are you in alignment? Values. Do you understand them? Imagination. Have you stepped into that picture? Hand. Action. Are you taking action or procrastinating? Are you giving service or working with or against who you are? Integrity. Are you doing each day what you said you were going to do? Are you following? So if you're not on track, then pause and see what is off and plan the next three months and then act. It's that simple. We're only in the, you know, starting the second quarter. So if you fall, Get back up, people. Don't waste this year. And that's what happens. You get caught into this net of negativity. If you want help with this, we can help you. You can do the following. You can attend the California Break Free Workshop because we will get you back on track and get you connected. Number That's number one. Number two, you can do a coaching consult. Invest some time in learning. The coaching consults are free. Come in. I'll guide you. I'll help you. Three, this is a big one. Join the Climber community and start the modules. Base Camp will take you through the first seven steps of stress mastery. Stress mastery. Then Module One will connect head, heart, and then it's up to you to act and get hand going. 
We'll connect you. Number four, attend a free webinar we're having tomorrow. Tell them, my friend. Yeah, that's... It's all going to be about that, just creating connection, yep. working in flow, and stop forcing it. Also, I heard we're giving away a ticket. That's a ticket for the event. Yeah, that would be good. So this free webinar is for you guys. I want to help you get ready for the second quarter. Get ready. And number five, apply what you learn in a podcast. It's just simple. We are teaching this. Six, read a good book. And that brings us to this quarter's book study. <laughs> so the book is titled The Power of Heart Language, Seven Proven Ways to Connect, Inspire, and Influence. The man who wrote this book is Monty Taylor. So let me tell you, let's start with the man. Let's talk about Monty as we always do before every book study. So Monty Taylor is a serial entrepreneur, author, coach, and business consultant. Now listen. For you network marketers out there, you MLMers, Monty knows the network marketing world. He is the former CEO of two network marketing companies. So all of you MLMers should be grabbing this book. Monty is a devoted network marketing executive who develops organizations. He has been in network marketing for over 25 years, building successful teams as an independent distributor and consultant. This is how I met Monty a few years ago while we worked together on a project. So I've gotten to work with the man and everything. This book is amazing. This is when, when he, he I, I got to look at it before it was published, Dave, and I, I told you I love this book. So in fact, while we were working together, Monty was stirring the idea of writing this book. And as you will learn over the next few months, Monty's philosophy and our philosophy here at Stress Mastery will mesh perfectly. Monty has a master's in business. He is an avid exerciser and a runner. He plays tennis and is a health enthusiast. In fact, he is a science nerd. And so we put on our science nerd hats and we talk about genes and the body and the human body, the way it functions. He knows his stuff. He actually ran a company that did gene testing. He's amazing. So Monty specializes in people communications. And this latest book takes this communication to a whole other level. Monty, by the way, has some great videos on his website that will educate you and give you a deeper understanding of who this man is and what he teaches. Just go to www.montytaylor.com, M-O-N-T-E Taylor.com, and you'll put the link below the show, right, David? Yeah. This will be the link for the next one. Makes it super so, easy. So let's talk about the book. The Power of Heart Language is a book that features practical knowledge, spiritual wisdom, humor, and some surprising secrets for connecting and influencing others. That's what the purpose of this book is. To teach you how to connect and influence. This book teaches proven communication principles to help you to inspire, persuade, and encourage people with integrity. So this is going to be a fun book. It's going to be very different than what people think that we're going to bring. I brought this book because of what we're teaching now in Stress Mastery. And I know this man. This is the real deal. And we will definitely do an interview with him to close this book out. So where do they get the book, David? At Amazon, right? Yeah, Amazon was the easiest way. And also has the uh, Kindle version as well. If you have Kindle Unlimited, I believe it's free. Wow, excellent. So it's The Power of Heart Language, Seven Proven Ways to Connect, Inspire, and Influence by Monty Taylor. So let's get into it. Let's go to work. So in the preface, he opens up. My father was an 80-20 teacher. I don't believe he would have described himself that way, nor do I recall him ever using those words. Of course, what I'm referring to is the principle of 80-20 that suggests that 80% of our results, rewards, or outcomes results from 20% of the causes or efforts we apply. So Monty continues, after 30 plus years of coaching thousands of individuals, when it comes to creating change and positive results, I've come to believe and accept that only a few things matter the most. The 
not as important things may have some impact, but focusing on them is typically not an efficient use of time. This is exactly what we teach in Green Focus Management. It's doing it the work that's going to make you money, people. You know, just a thought, you know, you might want to. It sounds like common sense, but it doesn't work like that. So, Monty goes on. In the early part of one summer, right before my senior year of high school, my father asked me if I would be willing to manage one of his service stations over the summer vacation. I was not yet 18, and although I'd worked for him in several of his other businesses, I was very nervous about taking on what seemed a tremendous responsibility. I didn't want to disappoint him. Plus, I didn't know how to manage a service station. <laughs> That's honesty, right? As added pressure, he said, his business was there on the outskirts of Grand Junction, Colorado, and it had been declining for several years. So his father listened to his concerns and then offered to create a to-do list of all the important things that he would need to know and accomplish. He said he'd review it with me, and then I could decide for myself if I wanted a job. So, a few days later, I was surprised when he handed me a small piece of paper with three bullet points. It went like this. First, make sure you open the station every morning at 7 a.m. and close it again at 7 p.m. sharp. Eat your lunch when you have a break, but don't close the station for any reason other than an emergency. Next, be sure that you enter every sale into the register and count out the customer's change correctly. I'll show you how. And then he put in a parenthesis, very, very few people use credit cards in those days. Then finally, every day after you close, bring the cash and register receipts to me so I can lock them in the safe. Then he handed me a second somewhat longer list and said, everything else will fall into place. You can learn everything else as you go. See, his strategy was to focus only on the essential things he felt were necessary to succeed. And Monty goes on, to this day, before I begin any important project, I still believe one of the most important questions I can ask is, what are the 10 to 20% of the activities that will create 80 to 90% of my results? And so as he was going over this project, I just, this is Monty talking, I decided that for my book project, I would focus squarely on the highest leverage skills those with the greatest possible impact on the quality and richness of human interconnection. There's nothing more important than what he's teaching in this book. And the, and the things you will learn in this book, because I know a lot of people may not know who Monty is. Maybe in the MLM world they will. But I'm telling you, the things he teaches you in this book will change every life category that we talk about. Every aspect of your life. So Monty continues. I firmly believe that these are the most significant. My list is very concise and includes only seven developable, principle-based people communication abilities. In my experience, these seven heart language skills offer each of us the most straightforward pathway to deepening our connection to the world and to the people we care about. This book couldn't be more important in business than it is today because we've lost some of that ability to connect because of technology, right? And when we're in business, when we're doing business, David, we're always, even if it might be Zoom, but we're always face-to-facing mm -hmm. it. We don't try to do it through text. We don't try to do it. We have to communicate with the people. This is what Monty's teaching. So Monty continues, if you commit to practicing improving your heart habitudes, that's what he calls them, I believe you can begin an immensely gratifying journey that will awaken your spirit and at the same time inspire hearts, minds, and perhaps even the very souls of everyone you touch. So we're going to go into the introduction today. Please get this book so you can follow us. We're going to do the introduction today. So the introduction is, what is a habitude? So Monty opens it up. After freely admitting in advance that I have a particular answer in my mind, one of my favorite questions is in a coaching session or workshop is to ask people to respond to this. If you had to choose a single ability, the one that in your opinion offered you the greatest capacity to influence others and to help you succeed personally, what skill would you choose? And so Monty goes on, he says, after a brief pause, some of the more common responses are leadership, 
public speaking, some version of people persuasion. It's not surprising that participants will suggest salesmanship, resilience, hard work, dedication, persistence. Some will propose just love others, you know, and he puts in a parenthesis, I especially appreciate this response because it suggests the idea that love might be a people skill and not simply an emotion or feeling. I love that. It's rare for anyone to identify the skill that I have in mind, so I will continue by offering another hint or two. See if you get it, David. Everyone has heard of this, and not having this particular talent or skill suggests a significant personal character deficiency. My ad includes tease out new responses such as honesty, integrity, faithfulness, but still not the skill I'm looking for. What do you think it is? Nothing? It's good. Connection? Well, let's keep going. After a few more tries, if it's not, if no one proposes, I will ask, would you be willing to consider the possibility that one of the most powerful, people-pleasing, influential, yet underused life, sk life success skills is the willingness and ability to regularly express gratitude? Would you agree with that? Yes. <laughs> and that's what he says there, right? So Monty goes on. Most of us don't think of gratitude as a people skill. Instead, we would call it an attitude or emotion. We don't often think of gratitude as an important life skill, one that can be developed and practiced. Most people consider gratitude to be a feeling, meaning that it is either felt or not. And similar to the action of a light switch, it is either on, off, with nothing in between. Gratitude. Could gratitude, the question he asks you is, could gratitude be a critical success principle? So assuming that it's possible to practice and develop even more gratitude, why should a person consider it? Is more gratitude worthwhile? Can it bring us more happiness, financial success, improved health, better relationships? That's the questions he asks. So Monty goes on, these are among the questions I will explore in the power of heart language. This is what you guys are going to learn. It's brilliant. And I believe some of the answers are, and then he, he puts it, and I agree with him, frankly astonishing, some of the answers you can get. So Monty goes on, I began to think about gratitude as a coachable skill or a habitude, in part from my experience many years ago as, as a personal manager and producer in the entertainment industry. You're going to learn a little bit about Monty. My father was an exceptional big band style musician, and although I was inspired to follow suit, I chose rock and pop music. I was fortunate to evolve as a professional musician and band leader and enjoyed an exciting career. I also had a delightful opportunity to meet and work with many exceptional musicians and entertainers. Gradually, I was drawn more to the producing and directing aspects of the music business and eventually abandoned my, music, my musical career to launch a management company. For nearly two decades, I focused on guiding careers of other musicians, singers, and performing artists. Over time, I noticed how much easier and more productive it was to manage clients who expressed a general sense of gratitude. And I agree. I've been coaching for over 20 years. And it's big time difference when somebody is in that energy of thankfulness, mm -hmm. gratitude. So... On the other hand, I encountered and observed, this is Monty speaking, entertainers who still somehow managed to stumble and fall regardless of their incredible, extraordinary talents. One of the reasons for their failure was an attitude of entitlement and thanklessness. I see this in the speaking world all the time. They come in and they treat people like garbage, especially the meeting planners. Those meeting planners are busting their butt in corporations, it can be the HR person in, in different events. And the speakers act like, well, you don't have my right water. I go, really? Go out and buy some water then, you know. Oh, it's in my contract. No, I see speakers do this, David, all the time. And so I don't know how successful they are. But I know one thing is, in my contract, I actually have an additional charge to spend time and ask questions that I will not allow my agent to charge. If I can, I'll sit there and answer every question until it's done. You're not going to have to pay me to answer questions after my talk. Yeah. I won't do it. I just won't do it. So he goes on. 
Monty continues, years ago on one of my many business trips in, to Las Vegas, a friend was opening act comedian for Loretta Lynn. Following her first night together, my friend offered to introduce me to Loretta. Somehow our social call lasted more than an hour, visiting and sitting cross-legged with Loretta on her dressing room floor, laughing and sharing showbiz stories. We got to get Monty to share some of these <laughs> stories, right? We got to get him out here and share some of these stories. Uh, I'd worked with many stars, so I wasn't starstruck, but I was smitten with her down-home, humble demeanor and gratitude. She was thankful the casino hotel hired her. I want you guys to listen to this. She was thankful the casino hotel hired her, grateful for the challenge and the people who supported her, and openly appreciative of what we that we took the time to visit her. And and that's I mean, that's why Loretta Lynn's had the career she's had, because she has gratitude. So Monty continues, eventually I left the entertainment industry to begin mentoring and coaching executives and entrepreneurs. Again, I continue to notice that clients who were less defensive, coachable, open to learning, and grateful for the good and not so good experiences were much more successful at achieving their goals and attracting others willing to help them realize their ambitions. Coaching and mentoring is a valuable learning opportunity. It's an experience that can heighten your understanding of what motivates people and what keeps people stuck. Importantly, I discovered also that if you want to coach, you must also be willing to be coached because either one alone can leave you empty. So I opened myself to the experience of being coached by others and I really believe in that. If you're a coach and you've never been coached, how can you be a coach? You have no experience. I remember when I went and got my my um, coach, my voice coach, and I was speaking at the time, and he says, wow, you're really bad. <laughs> I go, yeah, okay. And he taught me, I had to let go. It didn't matter getting paid this much for a talk. I had to be coachable. What do I always tell you? Be coachable. In the gym, what do I tell them? Yeah, it's always, always be, always be willing to learn from somebody. Yes. So, Monty continues, one of the most gifted individuals I had the pleasure of knowing and being mentored by was Leyland Val Van De Waal. Val was an author and spiritual teacher. This is good stuff, you guys, because this is what, what we teach here. So, let me continue. Val was an author and spiritual teacher who traveled the world for over 30 years, speaking and changing people's lives with two-day personal effectiveness workshops, appropriately, appropriately titled Habitudes. People love Vale for his unique style, his delightful sense of humor, and his astonishing ability to first read and then redirect people's belief systems. Vale stressed the importance of elevating one's consciousness by accessing greater levels of awareness. Sound familiar? That's what shift coaching is, mm -hmm. by the way. What I coach. What we teach, this is shift coaching. Now listen, he continues. So Val, I'm going to continue. Val stressed the importance of elevating one's conscious by accessing greater levels of awareness. Letting go of anger from the past, moving forward through the fear of change or the fear of the future, he taught thousands of his students to understand that these were foundational keys to success, achievement, better relationships, and true happiness. Monty goes on. I recall one student challenging him. So you're saying awareness is the most important thing we should work on? Val thought for a moment and responded, no, it's the second most important. Of course, the rest of us immediately wanted to know what Val believed was the most important. What was most important, then he offered this, what all human beings to need to work on to evolve spiritually is gratitude. You know why? We teach... We teach the steps, right, of intention. That means to set the goal and intention with purpose. So you're connecting head and heart, right? To step into the intention as if it's already done, correct? So we're now getting them to, to act. And then what is the third part? To allow it to happen. The only way you can accomplish and understand the law of mind and allow it to happen is to be thankful for it already. 
I was going to say, if, if you're acclimating to the energy as if it's already done, it's like if somebody already gave you something. And you're you thankful. Say thank you. And what are you in? <laughs> gratitude. And so listen to this. Gratitude, and this is Monty continuing. Gratitude has a unique vibration. He claimed, gratitude invokes the positive law of attraction and ingratitude invokes the law of repulsion. So work on your thankfulness. Figure out how to be genuinely grateful for everything that happens to you. Find the good parts. See the lesson. Be thankful for every person, every event or circumstance that you attract in your life, willing or unwilling, no matter how painful it may seem to you at the time. Val believed. That once you convert awareness into a positive intention, steps of intention, people, it becomes an ingrained habit. And your resulting habitude will begin to manifest miracles in your physical life. This is what Monty's going to be teaching us, okay? So I'm going to stop there and I'll pick it up. I'm going to actually pick it up from here because I have not finished the, uh, the introduction. So we're going to do the introduction in chapter one. Uh, next week, but I don't, I, I want to, he goes and explains this and I want him, he's going to explain heart language and I want not to rush that. Okay. Cause we are out of time because you had to put a commercial in. Um, why wasn't you? I'm thankful for your commercials, David. Thank you for writing those for me, please. Thank you. All right. So anything that you want to talk about on the book? Cause the book looks fascinating to me. I'm very excited to, uh, bring this to our audience. And if you've never heard of Monty Taylor, you will fall in love with this man. Trust me, just go to his website and watch some of his videos. They're incredible. He's got all these free resources. Just go to just go to MontyTaylor.com. Anything there, Super Millennial? No, I just think people are going to enjoy hearing what we teach from a different point of view. It's and it's going wonderful. to be a whole different world of experience that he's bringing. But I think it's all going to tie in. It's all going to tie in because you know why? Because it's truth. Mm -hmm. And remember, truth has to be true for every single human being or it's not true. That's it for today's show. Our mission here at the Stress Mastery Podcast is to create a shift in the planet. And you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired. <laughs>